Thank you very much, Sean. Um, okay, so as Sean said, uh, I am president of the Django Software Foundation, and part of our requirements as a not-for-profit uh, is to report to the membership. So this is the annual report of the Django Software Foundation, and hopefully also a little bit of an inspiration for what we can be doing, what, what we as a community can be doing going forward into the next year. So first off, um, what is the Django Software Foundation? For the benefit of those who don't know, uh, DSF is a 501c3 not-for-profit organization incorporated in Kansas. We were established in 2008, just before the 1.0, or Django 1.0 release, primarily as an instrument to hold uh, trademarks and IP and as someone who could accept uh, fundraising or could accept donations of, of money from anyone who wanted to give money to us. It's one of these little things where Open source as a community is very, very open and, and happy and sharing and, and everybody believes in everything, but the law likes people to be responsible. So the DSF is the legally responsible part of the Django project. We, as a 501c3, we have a very specific mission. Um, we have four points to that mission. We are supporting the development of Django by sponsoring sprints, meetups, gatherings, and community events. To promote the use of Django amongst the worldwide web development community to protect the intellectual property of the project and the framework's long-term viability, and to advance the state of the art in web development. There are actually some things we are specifically prohibited from doing. Uh, we can't lobby government. We're not allowed to campaign for or endorse anyone for public office. So it is entirely a software project or designed to drive Django as a software project. As a structure, or structurally, we uh, consist of a board, uh, or a board of directors, uh, a series of officers working with the board of directors, and two classes of members, developer members and corporate members. The board is made up of myself, uh, Adrian Holovardi and Jacob Kaplan-Moss. Uh, and up until uh, July of this year, uh, Dan Cox, who was uh, representative of Media for Media, which is the company that the Lawrence Journal World's IT department works with, uh, he resigned because uh, he resigned from the DSF board because his time, uh, he, he was resigning from his position at Media for Media. Uh, so I would like to first off to just thank Dan for his uh, five, uh, four or five years of service for the, um, for the DSF. And uh, taking over from Dan, filling the vacant seat, uh, is Alex Gaynor. So a uh, big thanks to Alex for stepping up and volunteering to step work of the board. I assumed the role of president in, uh, just prior to DjangoCon US 2010. Uh, so I've been working with this with the board for the last two years trying to progress the state of Django and, and look after all of Django's interests in a legal sense. I have to point out these are all not paid positions. We're actually not allowed to be paid for our work strictly. We are reimbursed for expenses on some occasions, but for the most part this is all volunteer effort. This is just people who are interested in looking after Django, helping Django uh, be safe in a legal sense and to help work out how we can spend money to make the Django community a better place. We have two other officers as well as the president's position. We also have a treasurer, Joseph Cochrans, who fortunately couldn't make it um, this, uh, for this Django Con, and Jeremy Dunk, uh, secretary, who is um, around here somewhere. Yeah, up the back, there he is, up the back. Okay, so we have two classes of membership. Uh, the first are developer members. At the moment, a rough analog is if the people who have the commit bit are the, are the, are the developer membership. There are two exceptions to that. Uh, at the moment, Danny Greenfeld and Jonas Obrist, Danny's not here, but Jonas is, are uh, two members of the Django uh, Software Foundation develop that, who are developer members who do not have the commit bit, but they've been chosen by the existing membership as representatives of the broader Django community who, because they've been involved with Django for so long, have demonstrated that they have Django's best, best interests at heart. We would like very much to be able to expand this group a great deal. It's not good that the core team is, is, the, is the developer membership. We need to have more people who aren't directly related to the core team involved in the decision-making process so that we can say with a hand on heart when the DSF makes a decision about something that really the whole community agrees with that decision or has at least had input to the decision that gets made. Uh, admissions to the, to the membership or to the developer membership are approved by the board but come essentially from uh, the membership nominating, or existing membership nominating new members. If you think you, you know someone who you think should be on the, uh, on the, as a developer member of, of the Django community, they, of, the, of the DSF, they don't have to be code committers. They can be just someone who's done a lot of advocacy work or written some really good documentation or organises a lot of local user activities. If you know one of these people, find one of the core developers, find Jonas um, at this conference, and get them, convince them to nominate that person to be a developer member. 
we want to expand this, this group as much as possible. The other class of member are our corporate members. These are paid memberships. Uh, they provide the funds that we then, then, then use to pass back to the community to get interesting things done, both in terms of paying our legal bills, we don't have a lot of them, but we do have some, and to then give money back to the community to help sponsor community events, sprints, to get people to conferences, things like that. Back in 2008, when the DSF was first founded, uh, a couple of the big players in the Django space were approached for money and they provided the seed funding. But we haven't really done anything serious about our corporate membership until January of this year. We had our first really hard uh, membership drive starting in January. Uh, corporate members get exactly the same voting rights as developer members. You know, one one uh, corporate member gets a vote. The membership breaks up into three categories. Small companies pay $500 a year, medium companies $1,000 per year, large companies $5,000 per year. What does small, medium, and large mean? Essentially, it comes down to a, an in-house decision. You're, 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 you tell us what level you're comfortable at, and what level you think represents your company, and we're happy to accept that on faith. Um, you know, if Google comes to us and says they're going to be a small company, we probably won't believe them, but for the most part, we're happy to take your judgment as to what, what financial contribution you are comfortable making. So, Let's take a moment to thank the companies that are currently corporate members of the Django Software Foundation. Amorous Digital Media, Axia Core, Butcher Shop Creative, Cactus Consulting, Chris Dev, Code Talkers, Divio, Energy Solutions, Imaginary Landscape, Anoa Technologies, Media for Media, The Open Bastion, Potato, Readability, Trio Labs, and Yipit. Thank you very much to those who have for contributing to the community. Now, remember, we are a not-for-profit, so we can just take donations. If, you're, if you don't want to be involved as a corporate member itself and you just have some money burning a hole in your pocket or your company has some honey, money burning a hole in its pocket, we can take straight up and down donations. Uh, they can be uh, targeted donations, for example. Uh, Google is sponsoring this year, has, uh, has agreed once again to sponsor the sprints, so the, well, the DjangoCon sprints, so they will be a fully catered event. Uh, so again, thank you to Google for, for the providing that sponsorship this year. And if you have a similar uh, axe to grind with regards to partic a particular activity you want to see forwarded or a particular thing you would like to see the DSF uh, uh, do on behalf of the Django community, come and talk to us. We are open to any suggestions about things you might want to sponsor if you, if you do want to go the uh, sponsorship or donation route rather than a specific membership. Okay, so what exactly does the DSF do? And more specifically, what have we done in the last 12 months? I've already mentioned we've had a change in the board. I've already mentioned that we've started a membership drive. What else have we done? Okay, well the first big block of activity that the DSF is responsible for is copyright. Um, this is an ongoing thing, that just, it just keeps rolling over every now and then. Important to note, who owns Django's code? We do, everyone does, okay? If you have contributed a patch, a documentation, whatever to, to, Django's core, uh, to Django's repository, you still own that contribution. You haven't given anything over to Django or to the Django Software Foundation. If you go and read the, uh, the license, the official license for, for Django, it is, it's phrased as copyright, Django Software Foundation, and individual contributors. Anything, so any creative con uh, contribution to Django is still owned by the person who originally contributed it. And Django, as a, or the Django Software Foundation, just acts as a clearinghouse. We need to be able to, if challenged, assert that we either own or are in a position to distribute all the code that we have put into the tarball that people are then using as Django in practice. Now, there are two ways of handling this. One is by copyright assignment, and if you've ever done anything with the GNU project, if you contribute to the GNU project, they ask you to assign copyright so that they own the copyright and you lose all rights to the code. The other way, is just the way that Django or the DSF handles things, is as a contributor license agreement. Contributor license agreement is an agreement to grant the Django Software Foundation a perpetual, worldwide, non-exclusive, no-charge, royalty-free, irrevocable license to reproduce, prepare derivative works of, publicly display, publicly perform, sub-license, and distribute your contributions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the interpretive dance performance of Django DB Models Pi will be in the main ballroom later this evening. Um, but the the important thing is this also includes any patents that you own that cover your contributions and you're essentially saying, okay, by giving this to the foundation, we're also licensing the, the foundation to pass that on on our behalf. Why do we do a contributor license agreement instead of asking for, for straight copyright assignment? Because you can contribute and continue to own your code. If you have come up with the Django equivalent of TimSort, you can continue to own that innovation 
use it, license it to other people, and all you've said is Django is allowed to use it on, my, on our behalf. I'm contributing it to Django, and Django can move on from there. So if you have contributed a patch, you should submit a CLA. If you have worked on a patch in company time, your employer needs to sign a CLA. And if in doubt, submit a CLA. <laughs> How do you do that? OK, go to the Django Project Foundation's website. There is a fact page. URL is up there. Download the PDF, sign it. If your boss needs to sign it, get them to sign it as well, if, if, if appropriate, and send it to us. Instructions are all on the fact page. We are working on electronic submission so that hopefully we can smooth this process all the way through. It's one of these things where we need to work out exactly what the lawyers will let us get away with. Second thing that J the, the DSF looks after are trademarks. The DSF is officially the owner of the Django trademark, which is that. The name Django as used for computer software, the color 092E20, and the usage of the font Prochiron uh, when used in that logo. This is one of those situations, again, where the lawyers get involved and we have to do things that we don't necessarily particularly like. On paper, the DSF owns that trademark, and we are the only people who are allowed to use it. In practice, we want the community to be able to use that mark. However, we have to defend the mark. We have to be show that we are in control of that mark. It can't be a free-for-all. You end up with situations like Xerox and Kleenex and Google where they are in risk of their brand name becoming a verb, and by becoming a verb, all of a sudden, it ceases to be something they can use to, defend, to, to represent their own company. If we don't protect the Django trademark, we have potentially could lose it. So. We are essentially trying to not be as restric restrictive as some people might be, might be, and we want to make sure that the community can continue to use this mark to represent what they're doing in the Django community. What does this mean in practice? If you are going to do something that modifies the Django mark in some way or adapts the Django mark in some way, you can't do anything that implies that the DSF endorses your product. You can't do anything that could be visually confused so that we can't distinguish your product or your, your thing from Django. Uh, anything that distorts the Django mark in some sort of significant way. And it's especially important if you're engaged in commerce. This is, again, just a little legal catch that if money is changing hands, it becomes a lot more important because the, the act of exchanging money means you are using Django in trade, which then has a whole bunch of legal implications. What does this actually mean in practice? OK, if you're starting a users group, you're almost certainly OK to call it the Ulan Batar Django users group. But Please ask officially, just for the sake of having the I's dotted and T's crossed, send us an email, contact the Django Software Foundation and say, hey, we're looking to start a, a, a users group in Ulan Bata, and um, we'd like to call it this. And this is the logo we want to use, a picture of a yak next to the Django logo. And we're almost certainly going to be OK with that. Um, we have just done that recently with a couple of the Toronto users group, the Moscow users group, have both done essentially Django Toronto with a picture of the spire, Django Moscow with a picture of the St. Peter's Cathedral. Um, there are also, if you like, you've got your own little uh, Django, Django tagging, Django snippets, whatever. Those, oh, Django snippets, bad example. You've got your own Django package. That sort of thing falls on a nominative use. It's the idea that you are using Jan the name Django to describe the fact that this thing is useful with Django, and you're essentially covered fine there. But if you're starting a new company, please don't call it Django Foo. Okay? We know we are late to this party, and there are a couple of people who have beaten us to the crunch on this. We don't want to come down on this hard, but it's unfortunately because it's, again, commerce is involved here, we have to get hard on it. And we need to be very, very careful about who uses a company name called Django Fu. Um, if in doubt, come and ask us. The reason we're being aggressive about this is we've already had a case where we needed to get the lawyers involved to make someone stop using Django in a very, very bad way. So this isn't abstract, this is actually in practice. And if we weren't defending the Django trademark, we wouldn't have been able to send the lawyers in to say, stop. So if you've got any questions about this, if you think you're possibly covered by this, come and have a chat to us. We will almost, we will need to get some legal advice depending upon exactly what your usage you have is. Um, but we want to be as accommodating as we possibly can be, acknowledging that there's you know, prior use involved. One interesting little piece and somewhat topical piece of the trademark puzzle is DjangoCon. Who runs DjangoCon? Well, anyone in this room, anyone anywhere on the planet, is free to hold a Django conference. However, the DSF owns the name DjangoCon. It's our conference, and we license the use of that name to whoever is organizing the DjangoCon that we've nominated. In the US, or sorry, in the, uh, uh, we, the DSF itself is not involved in the organization of DjangoCon. 
It's an entirely a privately run organization. This is done primarily for reasons of financial protection. Uh, it only takes one bad conference year where due to uh, natural disaster or some massive event or uh, that not, en not enough people sign up for the conference, the hotel is going to get paid, so they take the money out of the conference organizers. If the conference organizers is the DSF, then all of a sudden, all the money the DSF had has now gone into a hole to pay a hotel, and we don't have any money to advocate for the community anymore. So we specifically license the name out to other people who want to organize conferences. In Europe, this is done by the national users groups. Uh, this year, it was done by the Swiss Django users group. Next year, it's been done by the Warsaw Django users group. Uh, and they are licensed to run that conference for that year. They take on all the financial risk and take all the benefit from it. DjangoCon US, same situation. The original DjangoCon US in Mountain View happened because someone, specifically Robert Lofthouse, wanted a Django conference. And so he contacted Jacob, I think it was, and said, hey, I want a conference. And Jacob said, sure, go ahead, organize a conference, we'll be there. Um, Robert got busy, Steve decided, or Steve offered to, to take over and has been organizing Django, DjangoCon ever since. Now. We have now got a well-established Django conference. We're not in a state of panic over, oh, no, who's going to organize the next one? So what we're going to start doing going forward, starting in 2014, uh, is to open the organization of DjangoCon US up to competitive bidding. Now, we certainly hope that Steve will bid, but we're open, up to, open to anybody else who thinks they can do better. If you think you can organize a better conference than Steve has done, we would like to hear, hear what you have to propose and hear what you have to say. Okay? We will be opening up that bidding process in the very near future. We're going to be looking for well-formed bids, not just a bunch of guys saying, hey, we think we can do better. We want to see plans. We want to see how much you think it's going to cost. We want to know how much money you think you're going to make. We want to know how many seats you think you're going to sell, uh, who's going to be filling all your organizational roles, all the things that prove to us that you think that you actually are actually going to be able to deliver a conference that is at least as good, if not better, than, than what Steve has done for the last couple of years. So. If you think you're in a position to put together a rival show, start getting your plans together, and we'll certainly take a look at that. I hope to be able to announce this time next year um, where the 2014-2015 where the is sort of bidding in pairs, because there's financial benefits to doing that, um, where the 2014-15 uh, conferences will be held. OK, so if we don't organize DjangoCon, what exactly does the DSS spend all its money on? Well, a number of things. Infrastructure. We are currently in the process of organizing uh, a rebuild of DjangoProject.com. We're hoping we were going to be able to announce it for, for this keynote, but unfortunately just didn't quite come together in time. But uh, Three Spot has been very generously donating their time to help rebuild uh, the Django Project uh, website. Um, we also help pay for the infrastructure of a number of other projects, things like people.djangoproject.com, which languished on the vine for a while because uh, Simon Willison didn't have enough time to, to dedicate to keeping it alive. Uh, Bruno Reni stepped up, said, hey, we want to make that happen. We threw, threw money at it, and we now host that as a part of a, a core Django resource. DjangoSnippets.com, similar sort of thing. We've now got Django Snippets as part of our, um, under our wing as something that we're looking after. We've donated $1,000 to Read the Docs this year. Uh, Eric Holscher, unfortunately, couldn't make it, but um, Read the Docs is a resource that I've heard mentioned in at least one talk this morning. Uh, it's an incredibly useful resource, and I think everyone in this room has at some point used Read the Docs. So we want to make sure that that resource continues to be available, and so we've donated some of our funds to make sure that continues to happen. We also have some uh, uh, resources that have been given to us in kind. Heroku and Media Temple both donate uh, machines and CPU time to allow us to host these things. So, for example, people.djangoproject.com is hosted on Heroku. The Django Project website itself is hosted on Media Temple. If you build it, we'll br bring the checkbook. If you think you've got a great idea for a community resource, some form of website that we will be able to make use of or the community as a whole will be able to make use of, build it, have an idea, come and talk to us, and we're more than happy to help you host that in whatever way we can. Uh, and we can also, part of the reason we're doing the DjangoProject.com rebuild is to start increasing exposure to those websites. So at the moment, you know, people.djangoproject exists, but you have to know it exists. We want to put links on the homepage. You say, this is where all the cool stuff's happening. Okay, training. The Django Software Foundation is about to donate $2,000 to Kenneth Loves Getting Started with Django Kickstarter. If anyone else doesn't know about this, Kenneth is in the process of putting together, or has proposed on Kickstarter, putting together a series of videos. I think he's doing a, 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 a lightning talk about it later today, so he'll give you more details. But essentially, this is about building more training materials so that people have good access to training materials in Django, and we're going to throw some money behind making sure that happens as high quality as we possibly can. 
Sprints, the, obviously we're putting money into the DjangoCon US sprints, but we also have thrown funds variously into PyCon sprints. There was a development sprint in Warsaw in January. There was a series of sprints in San Francisco over the last couple of months that Jeremy Dunk has organized at the voters and offices. Um, essentially, we are there to make sure those sprints are as smooth and as lovely in events as they possibly can be. We'll buy the pizza, we won't buy the beer. Okay, we don't want Django events to just be, hey, let's everyone go get smashed. We want actually like creative activity to come out of this sort of stuff. So if you need help getting, getting equipment, you need help getting renting the tables, the power strips, or you just want to have you know, some, some pizza on hand so that everybody doesn't have to go out to go and hunt and forage for food during a sprint, come and talk to us. We want to fund more of these sprints because the sprints help us get, build momentum over you know, the development of Django itself. We also sponsor other conferences, particularly in areas and uh, or geographical areas where there isn't an existing Django conference. So if we have, we're a uh, silver sponsor of PyCon Australia about th three, four weeks ago. Uh, weeks ago. We were a silver sponsor of PyCon Philippines. We were an in-kind sponsor of Kiwi PyCon. And there's some discussions going on at the moment about possibly sponsoring uh, Rupai uh, as an upcoming conference. If you are involved with, I know a lot of the people here are, are, are from a US audience, but I know we have got some international visitors here, and obviously we're recording the videos. If you are involved in the organization of a conference, and you would, and you, particularly if you're in an area where Django is, doesn't have a native uh, uh, conference available, come and talk to us, because we want to be able to have the biggest, broadest, happiest Django community we can, and if a little bit of money will help make that happen, then come talk to us and we'll make that happen. We also have thrown some money at travel grants. Uh, Yanis Lydell, we paid to get him to the Warsaw Sprint in January. We helped uh, Karen Tracy get to DjangoCon Europe to give her her keynote. We helped fund Michael Petruca to get to EuroPython to sprint on composite foreign keys. It's not there yet, but hopefully we've uh, helped to get the progress that a little bit further by getting him into the room with some other people working on uh, EuroPython. And for DjangoCon US, we've al we allocated $3,000 in travel grants to get delegates from all sorts of locations to here. Those people who receive DjangoCon US travel grants, can we get a raised hand so we can show, who, show where we are? Are any of them in the room? Yeah, there's one, uh, uh, Tiago's over there, right? Everyone else is hiding? Okay, we, yeah, so we handed out $3,000 in travel grants for, for, for DjangoCon US. Okay. Now, that's what we've done so far. Um, you've seen our list of sponsors. They're all valued donations. We're very, very proud to have these group of companies both saying they want to financially support the foundation and they want to be involved in the decision-making process of representing the community. But there's a limit to how much money that brings in. And one of the problems that I've always had um, as DSF president, talking to particularly people in Australia who are companies that I know and people in companies that I've worked with, is that you go to them and you say, okay, Will you please become a member of the Django Software Foundation? And they say, well, what are you going to do? You say, well, we're going to buy some pizza at Sprints. And well, okay, you don't, need, you don't need thousands and thousands of dollars for that. So what I would like to try and use here, the remainder of my time here, to try and provide some inspiration of what we could do. Okay, and hopefully that will then provide, by having a reason to raise money, generate more donations, which gives us more reason to raise money and, and sort of snowball it on from there. So here are a list of grand ideas. This is not a list of something that I'm saying the DSF will do, so I won't be here next year saying, look at all this stuff we've done. What I'm saying is this is stuff that the DSF is interested in making happen if people in the community step up and make happen. Okay? The DSF is a volunteer organization. The, 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 the membership, or sorry, the, the, membership the, uh, the DSF board itself are not paid. We do this on our spare time to make sure the community as a whole has these resources available. We need you guys to step up and say, hey, yeah, we want to help too. We're going to help by building this. And the DSF can help provide the funds to make that happen. So, who'd like some Django merchandise? All right. We don't have a Django store. We don't have, at the moment, any place that I can point someone at and say, you want a sticker? Go to the talk to this guy, give him money. He will give you stickers. Uh, badges, shirts, ponies, whatever. We need someone to organize the store. Now, I know Michael Trozen was around, I'm not doing a very good hit rate at pointing people out in a crowd at <laughs> his talk, uh, has expressed an interest in, re in, in restoring one of his stores. But if you are interested in doing the logistics side of making a store happen, come talk to us. Because we would like to be able to have a link on the Django Project website that says, here is the store. Go buy your t-shirts here. 
But we need someone to organize it. We need someone to run it. We need someone to do the, 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 the packaging and all the rest of it. Now, it doesn't have to be a fully fledged 24 7 buy anything you want storefront. Um, if you want to manage it as a uh, every six months, we will run uh, the, the summer 2012 Django shirt and have a design that is only available for six months and use that as something that we will then blog about and say, hey, you better get your shirt. And then you have a thousand orders and we go and print a thousand shirts and hey, those are the money that goes to the foundation. If you want to run it that way, that sounds perfectly fine to me. And it's also a really great way to encourage people to buy a shirt every six months. You organize it, you put a professional face on it, we'll help you promote it and give you essentially a similar licensing deal to DjangoCon. You prove to us that you are able to run, this or run, run, run the Django shop, we'll give you the usage of the name and give you the, the coverage and the, the exposure that we can give you by way of the, the front page of the site. And if you need a little bit of seed money to get going, we might be able to organize that as well. Depends on exactly what you've got in mind. What about the DSF as a publisher? Now, Django's in an interesting position. Our docs are pretty good, and some publishers are a little bit antsy about publishing Django books because Django's documentation undermines the market for books, which is a good thing. <laughs> On the one hand, it's a good thing because docs are a good thing. But it also means that if you walk into a bookstore and there's three shelves of Ruby on Rails books and there's one six-year-old no, six Django book, which one are you going to buy? <laughs> hey, I'm going to go start using Rails because there's lots of books. It's not a good argument, but it's certainly you can understand how people make that argument. So let's fix that problem. Let's use the DSF's money to publish books. There's a lot of work that, you know, producing a good book is hard work. We're not underestimating what the work that publishers do for a second. We want to go and use DSF money to go, or we could potentially use DSF money to pay for the copy editing and the layout and all the things that publishers do. But we don't have a profit motive in mind. We don't need to make money out of this. We need to make the Django community better. So we can use Django money, specifically raise money, to help publish a good Django book or to publish lots and lots of little Django books. We don't have to publish a 900-page tome. You know, we could just go and package up the Django documentation, you know, put it a print on demand and call it the Django reference documentation. But would it be better to have a an ex vastly extended Django tutorial available as a 100-page book, print on demand, linked off of the home page, come buy our book, books available. And if we can get enough interest, maybe see if we can get them into bookstores. This is one of those things, if you've got an idea, if you, if you want to write a book, you're interested in writing a book, come and talk to us, because we are potentially interested in helping you to write that book or helping you to publish that book. And we have some resources we can add at disposal. If we know that there is someone who is definitely interested in writing a book and we need to go out and raise more money, then that gives us a reason to go and ask for sponsors to say, we want to republish this book. Give us money, we will publish this book, and Django will be a better place. Similarly, for training materials, like I said, we're funding Kenneth to get, for the Getting Started videos that he's working on. But what about have a sort of a Creative Commons licensed deck of slides in sort of the open courseware model, where the training materials themselves are the things that are time consuming to produce, but they're not the things that are valuable. So let's go and spend some money, build a good deck of training slides that anyone in this, in this room or anyone else in the, in, in the world can use, and then the training materials are available. You can start teaching local training courses. You can start having your local users, users group having a three week, you know, three weeks of meetups. Well, we'll just go run through the training, training course and get someone in your community to run the training course using the official Django training materials. Writing good training materials is hard. I've, I've done this and I know it's really hard work. So we want to, if someone's going to go to the effort of doing that, we want them to be good training materials. We're willing to maybe fund helping pay for the development of, the, of these training materials, as long as we can then give them to everybody, Creative Commons, to go and use in their, in their own local training. Outreach. Whether this means gender diversity, whether it means community diversity, if more Django developers is good for everybody. If everyone knows that Django's around, then it's easier to sell Django to clients. It means you don't have to try and fight the, why wouldn't I write this in PHP, because everyone knows PHP. You can just walk in and say, we're going to use Django, and everyone says yes, because everyone knows that Django is good, because it's got a huge community behind it. If you've got any ideas about how we can push outreach programs into, into make the Django community bigger, to make Django, a Django uh, users base, developers base bigger, come talk to us. 
because that's what we want to do. We, that's part of our mission, is to make sure Django is as big and as popular as it can be so we don't have to have these arguments about whether or not you should be using Django or Rails. It's obvious you should be using Django because we've got the awesome community. Starting to get to some slightly more possibly controversial and it really does, details do matter. What about bug bounties? There are bugs that are in Django's tracker that have been annoying people for a long time and we have no real way of making, them, making the, the, the bug fix happen because all of our core developers' time is volunteered. We have money. Money can buy things. Can it buy bug fixes? It's not going to be out. We're not going to no, circumvent the, 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 the quality process that we've got in terms of what code gets into Django. So you're not just going to be able to buy any patch you want. But if someone can come up with a good model of how we can turn donations into, reason, like, into time that makes bugs go away, we're interested in hearing about that. Now, obviously, the devil is in the detail here because, you know, if you've got two people who have worked on a patch, how do you split up the bounty? And if someone reviews a patch and one person writes a patch, which is the more significant contribution? Now, there are lots of little details that need to be sorted out here. But developer time is a critical factor here. You know, we, we, we know that developers are busy and developers need to eat. So if we can help buy their food, then maybe they will work on Django a little bit more. If you've got a proposal for how this can work, Pitch us, let us know, and we will possibly come to the party. Let's go a little bit bigger. Funded development. If you want a specific feature, you want to see a particular uh, feature get, get developed or get, you know, get by the, uh, the attention of a core developer to, to make this sort of thing happen. Maybe we can look at funded development. Again, details matter. We know we're gonna, it's not just, hey, we want to throw $1,000 at making something happen. We want, we want very specific plans for an equitable way of making this money go around. But if you've got a proposal, come and talk to us because we want to make this sort of thing happen. And, it, and this is the sort of thing that is a lot easier to pitch to companies, because you can say, hey, if you give us $1,000, we can, we can make these bugs go away. We can make this feature happen. Um, also, just more broadly, I, the, I'm Eric, will, will I'm certainly attest to this, I'm sure. I was involved with the, with the production of 1.2, 1.3. I'm Eric did 1.4. Jacob was mostly 1.1. Just wrangling the development process to put a release out is hideously time consuming. And utterly painful, teeth-pulling territory. But it's essential if we want to appear like we're a real live project that hasn't died on the vine. We need to make sure we maintain this momentum. If we can throw a little bit of money to make sure that the developers have, or the core developers' core team has the time to make sure this stuff happens, this, this sort of community, community management, community, uh, community, control, uh, uh, community momentum uh, aspect is something that we could potentially throw money at. Again, we need a good model for how this works financially, but if you've got a proposal, come and talk to us. So the summary here is that the, the, the DSF is here to help make the Django community as awesome as it possibly can be. Okay, we, we are volunteers. We don't have a great wad of time that we can spend on building things ourselves, but we want to be facilitators who can help you guys help us make everything in Django a better place. In, it, in many respects, what the DSF does is just a, a, a reflection of the way Django itself works. Yes, there is a core team that works on Django. Yes, they are all volunteers. But the reason open source in general is great is because of you guys. The guys who, and girls who sit there and write the code, write the patches, write the documentation, test the things, provide their volunteer time to make the entire Django ecosystem better. And not just Django itself, all the other packages that are around the outside of Django, uh, that, that support Django, the app, application ecosystem around Django. It's you guys, it's the community that makes Django a great thing. And the DSF is essentially the same thing. We are a small core team who, yes, we, we control the purse strings in the sense that someone has to have access to the bank account, but we want you guys to help us make the Django community a better place. So I'd like to encourage you to think big and even better act big. Come up, have the grand idea, have the grand vision for how you can help the Django community. We need people in the community to step up and do this sort of stuff. And if you do, if you need any help, we'll bring the checkbook. And we'll do, use all the powers that we have to get all, the, all the, com the companies that have money, all the people that have money, to get the money to you to make sure your cool idea happens. Beyond that, encourage your employer to think big as well. None of this is possible without money. Okay? None of these grand ideas are going to happen unless we have the funds to back it up. It utterly frustrates me when I talk to some of, some of the people that I've, I've spoken to about, uh, Django Cord, uh, Cord of, uh, about Django sponsorship, and they say, well, yeah, okay, but okay, I could give, you, give the DSF money. What do I get out of that? 
well, what you get is Django, this thing that you've spent, you've, you've made millions of dollars out of, you got for free, but it wasn't free, free. Other people volunteered. So it's time to give back a little bit, okay? We need you to help, you to, to not just be freeloading on this, that we need, we need the, the companies, the people, to all contribute together. And if what you can contribute is time, then contribute time. If what you can contribute is money, contribute money. If you can contribute expertise, contribute expertise. But we need you to get involved. Just sitting on the sideline doesn't help anything move forward. And the more funds we have, the more resources we have, the more, more grand dreams we have, the bigger our dreams can get. So, there we go. Any questions? Don't make me come and ask my own first question, all right? <laughs> All right, so I'll give you a softball. Yeah. So you've presented a bunch of big ideas. What's your number one pick? Honestly, the really simple ones, things like the merch store. Uh, I know it's really, really, it's really, really simple, but it's the sort of thing that really does build community. It's, you know, you, if there is the, the, cool, the, the thing that I remember of the mid-80s is the really, really cool sun shirts. They did have really, really good merchandising shirts. And if people ask questions about, hey, look at that cool shirt, it just starts stimulating. It's, it's really dumb that it works, but it works. Advertising does work. Uh, getting the message out there, having the access to those resources, I think, is, is really cool. Beyond that, I think the training materials is one that really does, does excite me because you know, getting I have written training materials and given training courses. Once you've written the training materials, the courses are easy to give, but writing the materials is a pain. Um, but we have enough people in this room to be able to build a good set of training materials, and particularly if we can seed them with a once-off development effort that is, okay, let's get the first chunk of everything out there and we just keep building on it with a accretion over time. So um, that would probably be my, my two, the, the, the one, that's, one that's a good idea, one that's a grand idea that actually is you know, highfalutin and all the rest of it, one of them is just kind of you know, nice from a community development point of view. Thank you. Hi, hey, Russ. Hey. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of ideas here that were, uh, we take a lot of time for something to do, like owning a big project like Django people uh, is, is a big task. Sure. What are, uh, what are some smaller sized tasks that uh, members of the community could uh, sort of volunteer t towards, sort of tasks that are maybe really can be the, the sum of many uh, smaller parts? Okay, well, uh, the, there are lots of little administrative things that possibly the, you know, the, the DSF could do help with. Um, we had, for example, handing out the, sp the, the scholarships, handing out the, the, the travel scholarships to come to DjangoCon this year. Someone's got to sit down, Coordinate the fact, let everyone know that they're available, answer the questions, to, uh, answer the questions of people who want to know if they can apply, read the applications to say, um, you know, yes, we're going to give money to them, no, we're not going to give money to them. It's not a big, a big job, but it's something that contributes. Now, getting involved in that sort of level of management. If you, if you are interested in getting involved in volunteering, uh, oh, my slides have disappeared. There was a, a link there, there's a DSF volunteers mailing list. If you get on this, on, onto that list, every now and then, you know, the DSF will say, hey, we need some people to help organize uh, uh, sponsorship uh, or coordinate the sponsorship process. Any, anyone want to help out? And then we'll you know, call on you as, as necessary. Uh. Uh, kind of in a similar vein, I, I, I'm one of the user group organizers. I know there's a bunch of others in the, uh, the room. Are there anything, any similar ideas uh, that, that you've either seen or, or have for how uh, user groups can kind of fit into all this? Uh, one thing I would definitely like to see, and this is more an extension of, uh, we have Django people, and Django people is a great place, a great way of putting pins in the ground of where people are, but it's not a good, at least at the moment, isn't a good resource for finding out where your local user group is and who, who's going to your user group. Now, obviously, you don't want to necessarily you know, supplant something like meetup.com. Uh, which is, you know, works great and is available and let's use it. If there's any way the DSF can help defray the costs of meetup.com for anyone that wants to organize a, a, a local user group, hey, we're up for that. Let's, let's, that's, a, that's a relatively low financial cost to us that takes it off the backs of the, um, you know, the, the local user groups who then have to raise money. Um, but there's all sorts of potential for Django people to be a really great organizational tool for finding local companies, local users groups, your local meetups that are happening in your area. Um, there's possibly also, I mean, the other, the other thing I could think you could possibly do is if we had better resources, things like you know, Django people integrating with groups better, sharing ideas for what 
you can do in a users group. I mean, you know, I, I'm trying to get a Django users group going in Perth, my home city, and the biggest issue is trying to work out, well, other than let's turn up every week and go get hammered, what it takes time and effort to organize a speech or someone to give a lecture every week, particularly if you are in an area where Django is not a, a huge, you know, has, has a huge presence. You've got 10 guys, 10 girls turning up every week. Um, you know, you, I have an experience of the, the Brisbane Django users group, um, which was great for the three or four weeks that it lasted because there were the two companies. One turned up one week and they would say, hey, here's what we're doing with Django. And the next week, the other company turned up and said, hey, here's what we're doing with Django. The third week, everyone sort of stood around and, yeah, okay. And then the next week, it just didn't happen. So it would be to sharing ideas about how to structure a user's group such that you have ideas for how to, how to make the thing persist, how to, how to make it become a, a vibrant group in your local community. Have you explored any um, funding opportunities through the US government, uh, maybe like the National Science Foundation or, or obtaining a grant uh, through one of those agencies and what has been your experience with that? Uh, no, we have not in any way. Um, mostly because, and this is where I have to, because I'm Australian, I don't know what's available for the US. Uh, every time I get involved in US tax law, it's a whole new adventure. Um, <laughs> So uh, if, you are, if you have any experience in that area, if you know that there are funds that are available or matching funds or anything that are available and you're interested in getting involved, that would be a fantastic small way to get involved. If you are willing to be our liaison with NIST or NSF or whatever groups are, have funds on offer, that would be a fantastic way to contribute. Uh, and come talk to me. We can sort of work out what's, what's plausible, what's not. Yeah? Okay. Oh, last question? Okay. okay, I have a question about Django Apps Repository mm -hmm. because there has been many Django apps repositories I have lost track of already, and do you think that DSF should point or make one of these, those repositories official? Because um, when I was starting with Zoop, it always, um, it appealed to me that it was actually bigger than the code base, because there was a link to some sort of official plugins or uh, applications. Uh, so yeah, okay, so I suppose it depends on exactly what, no with an if, yes with a but. Um, I don't think Django should be in the, in the, or the Django Software Foundation should be, or Django Project should be in a position of saying, this is the auth library you should use. But providing a mechanism for indexing which ones are available yeah. and whatever we can do around the outside to possibly recommend. Now, Django Packages, for example, does exist and is a reasonable yeah, example. Yeah, um, and um, the question, um, was if you would be willing to support such a, an index and make it like Django packages uh, site official somewhat to for for people to be able to find out what Django actually is that is actually bigger than the code base. Right. Okay. Um, I think there possibly is room to nominate one. At this point, the issue is trying to pick which one do we pick, and if we pick that one, and then this one turns out to be much better. How do we switch it over? Um, we're open to suggestions. If, if someone wants to say, hey, we should just pick this one, uh, let's have the discussion and we can possibly link off of it off of the, the Django homepage. We now have this, that we're working on the structure to make that possible. So um, I think that, that is certainly one of the areas. The other, so the other one that's, that's lingering out there as a, as a proposal that's been there forever is, um, a, is Y Django, which is the, the, the pointy head boss version of the Django website being able to convince your boss in non-technical terms why they shouldn't be concerned about writing their project in Django and providing that sales material for the person who is non-technical. So I think, yes, both the application index is something that's worth looking into if it means just picking Django packages and linking to it or at least having the discussion about what the other options are or what features we should be merging into a union project uh, or a, a, you know, a, common, a, common, a common version project of that. Um, Come pitch us an idea, and we'll and we'll look what we can see. What we can do, and um, I think that's that's it.